Welcome to Controls Explorer. If you are new to the PLC, this video will quickly walk you through how to write PLC codes. And what we have today with us Rockwell RS Logics 5000 software, suitable for control logics and compact logics, etc. So let's begin here. We got a sample code for plant number 16 right here with a control logics processor. We have task written here. We have IO modules, probably hundreds of them and different types of PLC coding, PLC task right over here. So I'm sure you learned a lot by this time. You learned about the IO modules, you learned about different types of project tasks, like how do you write the PLC codes and in segment wise. Is that true? Hang on for a second. This is not the way you should learn how to write PLC codes. Definitely, you deserve in a much better way. First and foremost, you need to understand the project concept, what exactly you are going to do. And once you really understand it, please sit back and relax. The most important part of it, how you are going to lay the controls architecture, so that six months from today, if you ever have to look back into it or say someone else is looking into your code without thinking twice, they should be able to jump into it. What I mean to the exact segment or the portion where the code is written. Now, what do you mean by a controls architecture layout? Let's take an example. It's like a big library building. As you are walking into a library building, what do you see? Maybe librarian, maybe bookshelves, and there could be hundreds and thousands of books. Let's take a quick walk into a library, but don't get overwhelmed looking into thousands of books. Just pick up any one book. The book got a name. The book got its own contents. And if you go to the respective page of any specific content, there is a story regarding it. And we follow a very similar analogy when you write PLC code. So let's take a one more fresh look into the sample PLC code once again. This is like a main library building. And over here you have the list of your books different names of the books and you open up any book you see the contents another book down here and the contents now let's open up any content page and see what we find there so this is the story written under that content Story means we are talking about the PLC code, the actual sequence or events. Now, let's build a project right from scratch. We got a very simple project right over here, a motor control. We have a green push button, we have a red push button, and an indicating lamp all connected to the PLC to control the motor. Also, the motor is protected by a motor circuit breaker or an overload relay whose ANO contact connected to the PLC. And somewhere in the line, we have an e-stop also connected to the PLC. And once we say an e-stop is connected to a regular PLC, what it means, we are complying to safety category level one. It's not category three or four because it's a regular standard PLC, not a safety processor. But let's keep it simple for the sake of it and have a look into the schematics next. This is the Moto standard power connection, like overload relay or circuit breaker. This is the networking architecture. You may ignore it for now. This is for further details. Now, the next, this is important, this is the PLC input card where you have e-stop, push buttons, overload relay, everything connected. And this is the output, which basically controls the indicating lamp as well as motor output. What I have here is RS Logics 5000. 
I basically just opened up RS Logix 5000 software. Just double click and this is where we are. Now there is no PLC codes written into it which we are going to create. Basically, we are trying to build our own library of PLC code. So, under main program, that is select main program, right click, and now select new routine. First, we will be inserting our first book. So, to begin with, we have to write the name of the book. Say, for example, machine line underscore one. It is as if our first book, the name of the book in the library. But the book is blank as of now. We just created the book. All right. Now, let's have a look into it. Under machine line one, we have few chapters like motor control. So, right click new routine write down our first chapter as a motor control now the second chapter right over here is the motor faults then you have one more chapter called vfd controls and finally vfd alarms now let's insert one more book the second book named utilities so under main task you have new program i mean right click new program you have utilities as if this is our second book again try to create all the chapters under this second book the chapters say for example compressor control compressor faults mcc control mcc alarms repeat the same process like exactly what we have done while we created our first book. So, we are now pretty much done with all the contents and two books. But there is one thing. The things are not in the desired sequence yet. Say for example, we want the VFD controls to come above the VFD alarm. So let's do one thing. We have to, this basically comes as an alphabetical order. So we have to play some tricks like sub 00, sub 01, sub 02, and then you write the name. One thing is very important here. Under machine line one, if you right click and go to the properties, you select configuration tab and it must be the main routine right over here what it means the plc basically scans the main routine which we just opened it here and main routine in turn call the other contains like subroutine one two three four zero or whatever in order to call the subroutine we have to insert an instruction called JSR, that is jump to subroutine. Now, we need to get rid of, of some of the unnecessary parameters which you do not need. So right over here, in this JSR instruction, we are basically calling subroutine 01, which is motor controls. So PLC looks into the main program and main program in turn calls the rest of the subroutine by an instruction called JSR, a jump to subroutine. So we are copying and pasting the rest of the jump subroutine instruction right over here. So here we are pretty much done with all those JSR subroutine. Now let's start writing the actual PLC code. Say, for example, open the motor controls, select a tab called beat, and insert a NO contact. Now, type a name of the NO contact, like what it is. Say, for example, this is e-stop control. These are basically nothing, but we are just creating the tags in the PLC language. Now, we type one thing 
and eventually we have to correlate that with the schematic actual IO. Right over here, the east of feedback is connected to PLC zero input, and we have to create an alias 